Hi, I'm Pamela Gordimer. I'm an environmental artist and I have been working on this painting series called a plein air painting series because I'm outside in nature painting the beautiful environment that we have. One of the goals I have as an environmental artist is to really bring home that our world is gorgeous and it is ours to care for and to cherish and take care of. So I have created the flow series from my backyard to the ocean. It's really interesting. This whole, doing this whole series has been fascinating to me just to realize how everything connects and how much bigger the Potomac River gets and more powerful and just such a force of nature as you get down closer to the Chesapeake Bay. The wind comes off the water, there's nothing to block it. So much wildlife why I've been out painting. And this, it's really interesting because I came down here to go paint at Point Lookout. And my husband and I reserved a Airbnb to stay at while I was painting at Point Lookout. And when I got here, I was like, oh my gosh, this spot is so gorgeous. And I was like, I have to do a painting here. And the painting has um, a lot of significance environmentally. Right behind me is the annex to the Patuxent River Naval Air Force Station. And while I was painting here, I was noticing some foam washing up on the shore. And I was like, oh, that's cool, sea foam here on a creek, you know? And um, it's really interesting how big and powerful the waves get on this creek. It's a very, it doesn't look like a creek to me, it's pretty big, but anyway, <clears throat> um, I will let the owner of this property tell you more about that foam that's washing up on the shore and it's not sea foam and it's not good and it's very in tied into environmental issues of this area. So it's really interesting how life brings you together with people that you have common interest with. Uh, my name is Pat Elder and I live uh, here in St. Mary's City, Maryland on the banks of St. Inigo's Creek and I met Pam a couple weeks ago when she stayed in my place here. I operate with my wife Nell and Airbnb and uh, we were happy to open our home and uh, have her paint some of this beautiful scenery. You know I can't say with any scientific uh, you know certainty that the foam contains massive quantities of PFAS but I did test the water here in February. The water beyond the foam so you have to figure it's mixed. Um, and we found um, 1,894 parts per trillion of PFAS. Um, and the Navy base uh, right across the uh, creek, is, the hangar is about 2,600 feet away. And that's the Webster Field Annex of the Patuxent River Naval Air Test Center. And um, they've used um, these compounds, per and polyfluoroalkyl substances, uh, for more than 20 years um, in routine training exercises. So um, they would uh, light fires and put them out with, with this firefighting foam. And they would also use it in you know, sprinkler systems in their, in their hangars. Anyway, all that stuff gets into the water. And um, you know, uh, um, the, the stuff turns into foam when it hits the beach. Kind of depends on the, on the wind and, and the tide but it's highly toxic and truly one of the most um, carcinogenic, uh, horrible chemicals ever made by human beings. And so um, now um, the problem is that the, the stuff, this PFAS stuff is bioaccumulative. So the fish and the oysters and the crabs, you know, live of course in the water and they accumulate the stuff and then we eat it. And so, um, although the focus in the state of Maryland across the country and with the EPA and with the military is to try to curtail levels of this stuff getting in drinking water when in fact, um, you know, the European studies say 86% of, um, of the stuff that's in our bodies, you know, comes from seafood, you know, seafood taken from contaminated waters. Um, but it's a really inconvenient truth because we have literally thousands of people employed in the seafood industry. And then you got all these seafood restaurants. And to all of a sudden say to people in Alexandria, you know, or Washington, you know, you shouldn't be sitting there eating a seafood platter because it's liable to 
uh, poison your great, great, great grandchildren. I, if I can say one thing about this place when you don't have the military helicopters going overhead is that there is such a serene peacefulness here and I think it came out in my painting. I just had to capture the, um, the not only the beauty of all the nature around and the sea grasses and the sea oats and the osprey nest and this is a crepe myrtle tree and, and the beautiful water that flows up in here but just capturing just how beautiful and precious and delicate this is. This place here is fragile, and you don't think it's fragile, but it is. Every ecosystem here is dependent on another ecosystem, which is dependent on us. So having said all that, now this painting is almost done. I'm just doing the fine touches, and then when I'm done with the fine touches, I'll let it dry completely and I'll go into a glazing process. So thank you very much for joining Rosie and me at St. Inigo's Creek, which is one of over 100,000 waterways that flow into the Chesapeake Bay, which is right down the waterway here. And um, we're going to head on out to Point Lookout which is where the Potomac River actually does flow into the bay, the Chesapeake Bay. And um, I will be doing a painting that I just started there. And so I'll see you there and thanks for joining us. Bye.